So it is Friday morning, and yeah, let's see what happened. Uh, hopefully, I check my alpaca dashboard, and I made millions of dollars while I was sleeping because this was automatically uh, trading. We screened for stocks that we had a bullish bias on, and uh, we set up this opening range uh, breakout uh, strategy to operate on a handful of these stocks, and it should have made some trades. So let's see. Uh, if we succeeded, so I'm going to check my alpaca dashboard here and click on overview. And damn, we did not make our million dollars. Uh, this is a paper trading account, by the way. Um, so it looks like we lost $19.40. So what what happened here? You know, we didn't lose a lot relatively to the uh, size of our account. So that's nice. We got stopped out. Now let's see if our program actually works. So I actually just, after I recorded the last video, I went to sleep and just let it do its thing. And so let's see if we got any trades. So if you look in here, you'll remember um, we selected this MCHI as one of the stocks. And it looks like uh, this was the opening range here and it looks like it failed to meet. So it actually did break out of this opening range. It had a very small opening range and it looks like it broke out of it, uh, but didn't quite hit the target, so we didn't sell. And then, bam, went back, and we must have hit the stop loss, right? And so, if you look at this, turns out there's a bunch of trades when we told it just to do uh, one trade. And so, there is a bug in our program that cost, caused us to lose money. We didn't test it very much, uh, so this bug made it in and when we ran our trading algorithm. And so let's figure out what that bug was. So if you look, right, there should have been only this one time where we enter the trade and we should have exited the trade. So if we look at our code here, why did we place multiple orders for the same stock? So if we look through here, uh, what I did, I had added this list orders here to get our orders that we've already sent. And we built a list of existing order symbols. And then at the bottom here, when we place the trade, we check if uh, the symbol is not in existing order symbols. So uh, we only place a trade if we haven't already placed an order for that particular uh, stock symbol. So what went wrong here? Well, if you actually look at the output here, so I'm gonna print existing order symbols here, and I'm just gonna run this program again. I'm gonna comment out the ordering part here real quick, just so that we don't place any more. Okay, so if I run that, Let's see what our existing order symbols are. And you'll notice you'll notice that completed and there's an empty bracket here indicating we haven't placed any orders. So that's not right. We've obviously placed a lot. So um, what I didn't do was properly read the documentation. And so if you look at Alpaca uh, API order, right? And if you read about orders and what this list orders API request actually does, um, it accepts a status. It says order status to be query, open, closed, or all. It defaults to open. So I only returned uh, the orders that I have open. And right now I have no orders open. So it looks like I've never placed a trade for uh, MCHI. And so when this next uh, iteration of the code runs again, it says, oh, this, the first, we, it finds a bar where it broke out of the opening range and says, oh, there's a breakout. You haven't ordered this before. Go ahead and order it. And so um, what's happening here is uh, we lost money because we ordered it, got stopped out, ordered it, got stopped out. So it's looking at this first uh, breakout over and over again, thinking we never placed the order, and then we're getting stopped out over and over again and losing money. And so a bug like that can cost you. So fortunately, we're able to test these ideas in a paper trading environment before we deploy them to a live trading or production environment, and we can catch these things and simulate them with some real world data uh, before uh, before uh, we bet real money on those. So um, yeah, so we have tons of trades. We're getting stopped out over and over again. And then we also have a winning trade, I believe in here, if I check uh, Dolby. So Dolby was one of our uh, top ideas, right? And so there's the opening range, it broke out and we were able to exit uh, with the profit. And that's why the loss is not quite that big because we had a winning trade as well. So $19.40.
So, so how do we fix this error so that it doesn't happen again? Let's go ahead and default it um, to all of the orders. So rather than just doing the open, we need to filter by status. And so what we could do is do uh, all. So in our list orders here, uh, my auto completion should tell me what it can do. And I say status, and let's just do status equals all. And if I run it again, you should see now you see my list of symbols, and so when we get to MCHI again, we'll see we'll see oh you've already ordered um, that particular stock, so it's not going to order it again. Okay, and then also um, since we want we, we might want to run this multiple days, um, we could also filter it down to um, after a certain date. Okay, and so I want to get uh, orders that were placed after a certain date, so after the market uh, opened today. And so I am going to paste this in. I have this timestamp formatted, and this is UTC time. So this is after 9:30. So this is 13:30, four hours after. Uh, New York time would be 9:30. And so for some reason, it looks like they use UTC time here, or uh, maybe I could format it differently. And so I'll just substitute this, uh, the current date that we already have. So we already calculate uh, the current date somewhere up here. Uh, let me put these dates uh, beforehand. Okay. Put the dates beforehand, and then I'll put in the uh, current date here, okay? And that should be good. So we're gonna get all the orders uh, from the current day. If we've already placed an order for the day, if it's filled even, then we're not gonna keep uh, execute the order. So we're gonna limit it to one trade per day uh, per stock in this particular case. And then also the limit here, if we're doing a lot of stocks, it looks like the default is 50. And so we could actually uh, limit set the limit to 500, for instance, right? And let's see if this still runs just to make sure. Yeah, and that should that should take care of it, okay? So didn't make any money here, but we did code an opening range breakout strategy and it actually did execute without our intervention. And what else could we have done here to avoid this loss? Well, at the end of video number seven, I mentioned exactly what I should have done, but just didn't do it. And so I'm gonna play this real quick to review what I said at the very end. So this is like the last minute of the video. Long slide side, uh, and we can add other filters. Um, this video is running a bit long, so I'm not gonna add other filters here, but uh, we could actually do bearish ideas as well. And you know, as of September, I had I've been leading a bit bearish. So if you watch the sentiment video, so. We probably should add some bearish ideas here as well. But uh, just for the sake of speed, uh, let's just go ahead and try out these 10, these 10 stocks here for tomorrow. Right, so I said as of September, I'm leaning bearish already. And we even knew um, after the market closed that Apple reported uh, earnings are disappointed. A lot of stocks were selling off. We're leading up until the election. There's a lot of volatility. And we've talked about uh, in the September video how um, you know, we recently w went below the February highs, right, which is here at around uh, 3393 or 3400. And once it went below that, uh, I started getting a little bit more bearish and took risk off. So um, there's no reason to only do long ideas. So do 10 long ideas when it looks like the start of a new downtrend here. So if we would have selected uh, bearish ideas and did an opening range breakdown, right, uh, and added that filter, then those would have probably all been all been winners. We could have just looked at the 52-week uh, low list and shorted all of them and did just fine, and that would have been profitable. Probably all of those would have been uh, winners. Yeah, so let's go ahead and add that filter just so that we can add uh, bearish ideas as well in the future for the next time we run this. So I have my web server running, and I'll start it up and go to localhost 8000. And then instead of all stocks and new closing highs, let's add the new closing lows list. And so let's look at what that would have done. And so uh, in our index here, uh, let's just remove the intraday highs and intraday lows. Let's just do new closing lows. And so we have two options here. And then our main.py here, um, we'll have our stock filter. And we'll say, and we can just copy this. Let's just copy this for now. Um, if the stock filter L if stock filter equals equals new closing lows, um, then we can get this query. Okay, and the min close right, 
and let's see how that works out. And so if I do the new closing lows, do that, we filter it and we filter it and we have no results. That's because our database is not up to date. We're on the 30th still. Uh, and so we need to uh, filter on, so we don't want today's date at this point in time. So we need to set up our cron script to automatically uh, update our price data, which we still haven't done yet. Uh, but just to show you uh, for the 29th, uh, what that looked like, uh, new closing lows. Okay. And we would have had this nice list here, which, which there were way more stocks closing at new lows than there were at new highs. So we should have went in with a bearish bias and aimed for shorting uh, stocks on the breakdown of the opening range. And you see all these country ETFs like Italy, Belgium, Austria, Spain, Singapore. So, you know, Spain and Italy, there's uh, a whole wave of COVID lockdowns happening right now, leading into the election, exponential uh, exponential growth in cases again that might be happening and also the lack of stimulus it makes no sense to uh go in with a bullish bias so so that's another improvement we can make to our strategy we would have been very profitable if we did not swim upstream if we uh traded in the direction of the overall market trend so yeah, that's it for now. I just wanted to check back in and talk about what happened uh, based on our trades. The nice thing about the opening range uh, breakout strategy is that even though the market uh, was tanking today, we didn't actually enter that many trades because most stocks uh, just faded with the market. So the only stocks we entered are ones that were managed to overcome that initial drop. Uh, but we and we uh, got stopped out, so we didn't have some huge loss. It was nineteen dollars, and that's mainly due to a bug in our program where we executed the same trade over and over again, and we even had a winning trade in Adobe, which managed to go up in the face of this drawdown. So um, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next video, and we'll continue to add features to our full stack trading app. Thanks for watching.